everyone, I'm Jeff from SmartPoly here to talk about creating a custom platform pack. Now, as you probably know, we do offer a very large library of platform packs that you can search for and download from. So let's say you need a Lenovo pack, you can find the model in here. And if you don't see it in this list, that doesn't mean you have to make it yourself. You can request us to build it for you. Now, depending on which support tier you're in, the an extra cost may be added depending on where the platform pack lands in and which matches up to our support tiers. So let's just keep that in mind. You don't always have to create your own. But let's say for this video we're creating a really custom machine that we built ourselves. I'll step you through the process that I like to use when I build packs. It's not quite as easy as making a step-by-step -step document, but hopefully this video will help give you a better idea of how it works. What we're going to do is start with getting our WMI text. This is a collection of hardware information from the system that we can help you get. It's what I use every time I need to make a platform pack and it's, again, very handy. To get this information, you can go to our support.smartdeploy.com front slash new website. This is the support form where you can submit a support ticket or request us to build a platform pack. We can go to platform pack where these instructions appear and we can just take step one and download this WMI.VBS script. And this will generate this WMI text. You would run this on one of your the system that you built that's already running Windows and you'd get this information. And once we have that, we can go download our drivers. Now, Lenovo, for this example, I'm doing a Lenovo ThinkPad T440P. There's a lot of drivers here that normally, if we when we build this p platform pack, we would get all the drivers. But for the sake of this video, keeping it short, I'm just going to do the ethernet, the storage, the wireless LAN, and the audio drivers. That should be enough. Now, while we're on the subject of drivers, I like to remind customers that um, these drivers come with a README file. This file is really handy to take when you download your drivers because it has a lot of information about the driver. So if we go look at the Ethernet driver, I've downloaded this README, and it has some information on the driver that if you need to go back and review the driver you have in your platform pack, you'd have this WMI, or sorry, this uh, driver text that you can open up quickly if you need to extract the driver and verify that you, which version you have rather than go dig around in the INF. Now, with that said, let's get started. I've already downloaded the four drivers that I want to put into my pack. Now, it's easy to get lost in the woods when you're dealing with a lot of these drivers and unpacking them because they come with a lot of files. And so what I like to do is I start with the driver folder on the left and on the right I have a, another window that I'm going to call, or sorry, I'm going to make a folder call it Windows 10 and keep it on the right here and the, as I extract drivers and find the ones that I want to include in my pack I'll copy them to the right and it's easier to keep track of what where, I, where I'm at when building the pack. Now I'm going to go a little out of order because I want to start with the Ethernet driver. I haven't extracted this one yet. Um, different drivers extract differently of course. Sometimes you can use something like 7-zip and extract and rather than go through the whole process of the wizard and everything, but we can tell that these are the files that we want. So I'm going to get rid of this folder because I don't want it. I'm just going to run the Lenovo driver exe. Lenovo drivers are really good about this. Every OEM is different in how they handle this. Now it wants a location. I'm going to take my empty extracted folder. Again, this is just how I like to do it so I can keep track of where my files are. I'm going to extract it here. And then I will uncheck the box. I don't want to install the driver. So now we can see the files that came in this package. I know I don't need anything in the apps folder because I'm just after the driver. So Windows 64, NDIS 65. All right, so we have our drivers. Now this is a great example of why we want the WMI, the WMI info. Because we have a couple of drivers here and we want to make sure that we only take the files that we need. So I'm going to come back into this WMI and I'm going to search for Ethernet. Now you can see the lines in this, this section of the, the driver ID gets less and less specific. But we want to start with as specific as we can get. So we're going to copy this line here and search for it. Now this, you'll start seeing patterns as you do more and more of these. Vendor 8086, we know this is Intel and device has an ID and a subsys and we can get pretty narrow with the driver. Now, we want to search for this line in these files, and the best way to do that is if you go in advanced search options and you can enable searching for file contents, system files, and zipped folders, that's uh, really important 
for searching for this stuff because now we'll search for this string and we'll find the one INF that we want to bring over into our platform pack. So next we need to open the INF and we're going to see which files are going to come with our uh, INF file. We want to get this catalog file e1d65x64.cat and that's this one. All right, those two files we definitely want to bring. Now let's look look for the source disk files. Now there's a string you can search for, KSF, that's pretty unique and will take you right to the source disk files of this INF. This is the most important part. This is what we want to look at every time because this lists the files that this driver needs to function. And this allows us to copy only the files we need and we can leave all the other stuff behind that came in the driver package. So we're going to take E1D message nick inst d nick co 4dll and then e1d65 den and e1d65 sys. So you notice that the inf and the cat catalog file aren't listed here. We do want to make sure that we just copy those first before you go look at this file so you don't forget to copy those otherwise the driver won't be injected correctly. We're going to paste that and I'm going to come back to that information file that I also downloaded and I'm going to include this in here too. So later on I can look at the pack and just quickly verify that I, which driver I have installed. Now let's keep going. Ethernet's done. Let's go back to audio. Now the rest of these drivers I have uh, saved us some time and I've already extracted. So in my working folder here, oh and I can see I've already made a mistake. I've extracted the Ethernet drivers directly in my Windows 10 folder. We want to keep these organized really want to make sure we keep these organized in their own directories. When we import this Windows 10 folder into our platform pack, uh, it's going to bring along these folders underneath, and I'll show you that later. And it really makes uh, extracting easier in organization. It's really important. So next, I'm going to do audio. Now, I've already extracted. Oh, let's, you know what? Let's just, while we're looking at it, let's take our readme text. And we're going to see, see what, this is what I meant by, there are a lot of files. We want to win 64 and here we go. We can be sure this is, these are the drivers. Now there's only one INF, so we don't need to filter out different INFs by using the um, WMI info like we did before, but we do have a lot of files here and we want to make sure that we copy only the ones we need. Now, like we did with the Ethernet, we could go through and select individual files. We're already looking at source disk files here. We could go down this whole list, but that can take quite a bit of time. I'll show you a trick that I do, especially with audio drivers, is I'm going to copy all these files listed here. And then I'm going to pop over to Excel and paste them. So now I have all the files listed here. I saw a couple that were commented out. Oops, what button did I hit? We don't need these files because they're commented out in the INF, so we don't need to try and copy them. Was there one more? Yes, there was. We're going to delete this too. All right, next we need to get rid of the equal 222. So I'm going to go find replace, find equal 222, replace it with nothing, hit replace all, and all that stuff is gone. Now we just have our file list. So we can save this as, I'm going to save it to a temp folder, I'm going to call it files and make a CSV so we can use a command line to copy these files and save us the trouble. This is particularly important when um, you I mentioned sometimes the audio driver will have more INF so it'll have even more files here that you don't need. We're only looking at 42. Again we want to make sure that we only copy the files that we really need. Now with that CVS, uh, a CSV file made, I'm going to go to this little command I've made myself that I keep on hand. This is a PowerShell that's going to look at that CSV and for each item in that CSV it'll copy it from a source to a destination dir. Super handy. So we can come paste it here and then let's get rid of this stuff. Our source dir is where we got them all extracted and paste. And our destination dir is in our Windows 10 folder. And paste. Hit enter, and we'll see all our files. And there, we can make sure that we only have the files we need and none of the files that we don't need. 
And as I uh, want to remind you, the INF and the catalog file don't aren't listed in that, so you do need to copy these manually. And there, and now our audio driver is complete. Let's keep going. We've got storage. Create a storage folder. I want this readme text. I've extracted the drivers. See, go to drivers folder. And uh, we have two INFs here. And when you've been doing these driver packs for as long as I have, I can know for sure that both of these INFs are included. I'm going to copy all these. This is very typical for what a, an Intel storage driver looks like. And you can almost always just take all of the files. Let's go to wireless and continue. Make my wireless folder. I'm going to bring my README. And see drivers, when T. All right, and we have another example of multiple drivers in the same package. So just for a good measure, let's copy, close this other stuff we don't need to open. We'll go back to our WMI and let's search for wireless. All right. Uh, this found it at the top, but this will still work. So we can still get the, the vendor device and subsys ID that we're after to make sure that we're copying this, or rather filtering out the correct INF that we want to copy for the dual band wireless AC7260. Come back and paste. And there we go. Number two is number two INF is the one we're after. We'll close this and the INF. The cat catalog file we want to come with, and actually let's open the INF real quick just to make sure and search for KSF to take us to the source disk files. And we need netwbw02 and netwfw02. And all these, these drivers are easy. They're all given a letter. So we just need these four files, the sys, the dat, the INF, and the cat. And copy, close this. And there, now we have our wireless driver set. And that's it. That's how we kind of dig into these drivers and you know ignore the files that we don't need and make sure that our driver is going to import correctly. So the next thing to do now is to open Platform Manager. And that's hidden away in Program Files, x86, Smart Deploy, Smart Deploy Enterprise, and Platform.exe. Now, once Platform Manager is open, the first thing we do is file, new, and pick a place to save it. I'm building a Lenovo ThinkPad T440P for Windows 10. You can, you can name this whatever you, you want, but the more detailed you are, the easier it is to keep track of it. With the pack, Platform Pack made, we're going to right-click Platform Pack, click Add, and we can select one of these manufacturers that we already have preset, uh, or you can choose other and specify your own. And I'll show you what this does in just a second. So we're going to choose Lenovo. And so it's going to automatically fill out this WMI filter for us, where computer system, where manufacturer is like Lenovo. Then I'm going to add the model. Now, this is another area where the WMI text is really handy to have because it's, the platform pack is going to use this WMI filter to look for whatever you put here to make sure that this platform pack gets applied to the system you're deploying to and only the system that you're deploying to. Now, if we go back to the top of this WMI information, we can see the Win32 computer system product vendor version is ThinkPad T440P. I'm just going to copy this, and that's where... I'll paste it, and you can see it fills out computer system product where version is like ThinkPad T440P. Now, you don't have to use computer system where product where version. Like You can customize this WMI filter to look at whatever value in this WMI text that you are going to need to use to uniquely identify the model of system that you're deploying. Maybe it's the the a BIOS version, or you know it could be anything. What a system type... Uh, whatever you can find that's unique that will make sure that it's only the system that you're deploying to. So with ThinkPad T44P and set, we'll right click, add, and now we're ready to add the drivers. So the target operating system is Windows 10, and we're going to browse to and select that Windows 10 folder that we made. Click OK, click OK, and it's going to import and process all these files. 
and give it a quick second. And then I'll show you what it looks like once all the drivers are in place. And you'll see what I mean by giving the drivers unique folders. So once they're in, we can look and see Ethernet driver and we can look at the INFs and under each one. And there we go. Now, another good idea, not required, is you have this comment section. I highly recommend giving your PACI version number. Zero, zero, and it can act as kind of like a uh, a birth date, right? So this is February 25th, 2019. Oops, 2019. Now this is a really good way uh, as an overall dating, a birthday for your platform pack. If you feel like you need to come up and update drivers, you can come in and say, oh, that's right, I built this pack in February 2019, and, you know, and it's December. Let's just go through, and any driver that was released after this date, let's go ahead and replace whatever's in here. Initial. We'll call it initial creation. And then we'll click save, and we're set. Now let's say that you do want to go back and review one of the drivers. Let's say Ethernet. We can right click Ethernet and click Extract. And on the desktop, I'm going to make a new folder and call it Temp. And then I click OK. And then we can go back to the Temp folder I created. And so here's our Ethernet driver. And we can just look at this text file that we included and go, yep, OK, that's the right driver. Never mind. I don't need to update the Ethernet driver. It's fine. And that's it, our pack is done and it's ready to be applied to our system. But I would like to cover uh, an additional thing with platform packs. So let's say you go and use this platform pack and you get into uh, the smart deploy boot environment and you don't have ethernet access. It's like the ethernet driver is not even there. Well, that could mean that the Ethernet driver needs to be injected into our boot image. Now, we are currently using a Windows 10 boot image, so it's really easy to come back and fix this. So what we'll do is go back to our Windows 10 folder where we extracted the Ethernet driver. And we're going to say we need this Windows 10 driver to be injected into the WinPE10 uh, boot image. So we'll go over here and we'll create a folder called WinPE. And I'm going to paste the Ethernet driver in here. Now we'll come back to our platform pack and right click ThinkPad and click add. Of course, we're going to add a new node. And in this operating system drop on at the bottom down here, we have WinPE 10. And we're going to browse and select that WinPE folder we made. Click OK. Now we have a second node with just the Ethernet driver. So what happens is when you create your media, your boot media, It'll ask you which platform packs to select. What it's doing is it's going to look at those platform packs and if, if it's going to look for this WinPE node. And if it exists, it's going to take that driver and inject it into the boot image. So when you boot into Smart Deploy, those drivers are present and you can reach the network. And in, in often cases, we need to do this with the storage driver too. Sometimes it's just Ethernet and oft also, usually it's not needed at all. But with that, we can hit File and save and our pack is ready to go. We can test it using offline deployment media or we can just throw it into the pool where we have our other platform packs downloaded and when we do our deployments, Smart Deploy will parse that WMI information and make sure that this pack only gets applied to the system, the custom system that it was designed for. And that's it. Like I said, it can be a little tricky, but I hope this was helpful. Feel free to leave me any questions or if you liked me to elaborate on any specific part of this, I'm happy to do so. And as always, thank you for watching.